this is a pet cock and we're going to remove the gas tank next but make sure that it's in this position not this this is closed and usually it says on the side off reserve and on so if you push it and it the arrow points up that is on this way it closes the valve and down it goes to reserve so uh, this is pretty standard in older bikes first thing we got to do is remove this hose using some pliers just kind of pull back the this little clip but this one's like rusted in so just by doing this I might actually have to redo these these hoses what tends to happen is that you know hoses over time they will break and just become very fragile I've had like rides where my older bikes have just started leaking gas and it's all from like these hoses that haven't been renewed I um, was riding my ST 1100 1991 with a hundred thousand miles and it started leaking gas and the hose for the gas was so difficult to get to get to it's like a, almost like a car engine and so I had to get towed home crazy how oh, this kind of moves around That's good. there we go there is no gas in there anyway but 12 millimeter and let's just get it on here Ooh. let's see if I can Hopefully this is going to be easy removal. All right, this little rubber piece probably don't need, it. need to remove it. There we go. The rubber piece. So interesting about this rubber piece is that you should also clean it, but it kind of slides like this. Let's pull this gas tank back. There we go. Very small gas tank. Very, very tiny have this little rubber piece here what I like to do is sometimes just put the bolt back on there just so I have it this is very similar to the Honda Shadow but I love how narrow this is so this is the air box right here um, and it goes into the carburetors we are going to be pulling this out Let's, um, take a Phillips head and just um, unscrew that you don't have to remove it entirely and there's two one, I guess, tightens up the, the air box and then one tightens it higher. So now, to remove this, we're going to have to follow it to the actual carb. This is the carb right here. Very easy to access, but with carbs, it's one of the things I really hate. But we're going to unbolt it. You don't have to remove this clamp. Also, you know, you're going to learn to move these clamps in such a way that it makes it easier to remove because you know it's often you have to do that all right so that's loose there's only one clamp on the carburetor side here right here and now that should move and then there's one up here and Remember, you don't have to completely remove these clamps. Just loosen them and they should slide freely. And now we have two bolts down here. It might be a little bit hard to see for you guys, but it's the same. It's the uh, clamps going into the engine. You know, it's funny. You see computer guys also doing the exact same thing. It's like tweaking their computers, rebuilding stuff. It's, this is the same process. It's the same sort of thing that you get from it. It's kind of cool. Like I've never thought I'd be doing like mechanical stuff like this, but after a while you kind of understand it, but you know, I'm still learning. So for me, I look at this like a computer inside a computer, putting like the CPU, the memory, the video card. It's the exact same thing. And if there's a malfunction, you have to kind of figure things out. It's trial and error. They should really teach this sort of stuff in school. The idle control uh, knob here. And usually sometimes they just have a screw that you have to use like this, like a Phillips screw to adjust it. 
but I do appreciate that Honda put like a really nice knob to it. See, that's the fit and finish I do expect from motor motorcycle makers. It's that sort of thing. At this point, we want to remove these cables. And I think what I'm going to start doing is removing this. There's a plate here, and I hope that this is the... Uh, this is so tight. Using a 10 millimeter, I'm going to see if I can pull out the cables, loosen them quite a bit, and see if I can somehow push this off. And there goes that cable. But I do need to remove it. It's just I don't... I might have to cut cut those bolts out, which I'm not really looking forward to. That's much more work. My throttle is completely stuck. It could be also that the rubber is stuck on the grip, but I am un unable to remove this. This is very familiar from the Kimco. It's, I think this is like the choke, but it's like an enricher type of choke. So I'm just gonna pull this off like this. I sprayed a lot of oil. Yeah, that worked. All right, impact wrench, guys. Get this out. Ugh. So much work with the regular tools. So here comes this plate. Man, that was a kind of a pain in the ass. All right, it's stuck. Right. I think next time I remove this, make sure you remove this thing first. But there we go. You don't have to remove this, but I'm just kind of curious to see what is happening. It'll be easier for me to. So that is a lot of, so there's a nut and then there's this. And this is really stuck on. So I wonder if there's something up with that wheel. Cause it does seem like this might be the reason it's, um, and sometimes penetrating oil and just oil in general will be, cause this should move. The, the wheel should move and it's not moving because we need it to move so we can pull the cables out. So I think it's just seized on here. At least that's a um, what I'm figuring out. Yeah, this should be completely kind of moving off of here. And it might just be like something simple to just put it all over here. You know, I'm actually anything, but I do need to and move it. Well guys, I just screwed up royally. In my hopes to remove this wheel, I broke off this from the wheel. So I'm going to have to order one of these. Ah, that was bad. And, but it might be a standard sort of uh, thing. So yeah. Don't rush with these things because apparently you can screw things up even more than... And that's my case. You gotta break stuff. Um, what I was doing, don't do this. I was like using my a tire lever to get this out just by pushing it. But I cannot get this thing to budge. So I did break this. I'm just gonna have to figure out exactly that's one way of uh, removing it. So we have the air box. We should be able to like pull it out. There we go. This is a tire lever I'm using and I just want to kind of push it up because it's pretty stuck on. I don't think it's ever been removed. There we go. Separating. There we go. There's the air box. So that's the carburetor part that's come out. And here we go. Normally, this does go back together, but I like to make sure that <clears throat> there's no air leaks. And it looks like it was repaired at one point. There are indications that somebody tried to fix it. So uh, we're probably gonna fix it again because we don't want any leaks coming from here because then the bike is gonna run like crap. Now we're looking at the carburetor and it's kind of interesting because it's reversed. So the left one, the cover is here. The right one, the cover, this part is over here. So, because it's a V-twin. So what we have to do now is to get everything out. And one of the things that we need to kind of look around, take your time to really like look at where the hoses are. Because this is what I struggle with. I remove the carburetor and then I struggle how to put it back. So 
there's a, <clears throat> a line here, which is, I think it's like the electronic thing. And that actually goes into the coil, which is over there. And it's this one. You're probably not going to make a mistake with this one. But this one here, it goes into the right carburetor. And it's from the air box, I believe. Yeah, or uh, from the engine, the crankcase. And it goes into here. We're going to have to remove this. And there's two cables, actually. It's a T. Here we go, if I pull it up. It's a T, and it's very stiff. Oh man, it is just so stiff, unbelievably stiff. So remember, this is a T. One goes into one carburetor, another one goes into the other carburetor. To get this out. Yeah, let's see. There we go. Just by loosening it and then pulling it up. That's, there we go. So it is moving. So that's good. <clears throat> I don't want to damage it by prying it. Uh, the last thing I want to do is make more mistakes. I managed to remove one of the cables. This is the throttle one. So if you roll the throttle, this goes in and then this one returns it. So at this point, I think I should be able to pull this one out. And there we go. Cables are out. We're still going to have to fix this because it's not rotating at all. We're going to use a 14 millimeter to remove the choke. And all you have to do is like loosen it a bit and this usually comes out okay with your fingers. It's loose, it's stuck on there though. I wonder why there's like a spring. Okay, I'm just gonna I guess leave it like that. And it's another branch I guess of the enricher or the choke and we're going to just remove this as well. even sure if I should be removing that yeah I've never seen that usually when you remove this you can remove it but there's a spring or something in there now I'm wondering if I should even be removing this all right I am not gonna lie guys just pulling this carburetor out is becoming a pain the little rubber here is also super it was like stuck on so there's there's definitely some issues with this carburetor. Uh, but lifting it up has been really difficult. So this part, this is the fuel line for the petcock. And this goes into the other carburetor like this. So this part, there's a little plastic T that connects do, to the engine and to the other crank, uh, the other, like uh, the other carburetor. And just by simply moving it, you can see it broke off. So these are problems that old bikes have. So I do recommend like you taking time to renew all the rubber hoses. It's usually kind of cheap to do anyway, but it's just time consuming. And of course, it's much easier not to do it. I managed to remove this just by simply pushing it out. And remember, this is what stuck on. Actually, it wasn't this, it wasn't the wheel. And I broke this, I'm gonna have to reorder it, so. And the way this works is that there is, I guess it clips onto here and then it rotates. So kind of important to know the direction. So that kind of goes this way. Getting oil to get this out, but there's something really seriously off with it. I don't know exactly, but the carburetor does have lots of issues and I am really looking forward to like removing it. The issues I'm having is that this plunger, this is a 14 millimeter, we removed it, and there's something really happening with this carburetor. So I got the carburetor out, but I have to remove these two carb enricher cables from the housing of the carb, and they're on both sides, but the problem is they're stuck. There's a lot of things stuck with this carburetor including this, and this is a big issue because this is what th turns the throttle. This has been sitting for probably years and years, so we really have to take care of this entire bike, but the carburetor has major issues. So one of the things we're gonna start is putting some penetrating fluid inside here. In richer, the choke, it's still stuck on the housing. So the next step, what I'm gonna try is this. 
This is a heat gun, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like aim it at the actual carb. Hopefully it'll expand, and it'll be easier to kind of push out. I'm so. I guess the downside is that this plastic does melt if you... Ah, that's so... I don't want to like put anything in there. Well, guys, I screwed up again, so the plunger did not come out, but I did manage to remove this. And uh, I guess the cable did come out, but there is a piece on there that is completely stuck. Hopefully you can see this, but... So that's a 14 millimeter, we have to remove it. And it's very difficult to kind of like pull it out because I mean, it is completely stuck. Let's see if I can just kind of pull it out. Oh man, oh, man, okay. So same problem that happened before on the other side. So it is still on there really. And to pull it out, just kind of Push it back and let's see. So there's these cables here. Move them aside. Sometimes I can might be able to pull this one out. This cable. And here's the carburetor. Putting something over the engine carb boot like this. You don't have to you know, make it really tight, but like a latex glove, like the way I'm, what I'm wearing, really is good because you can just kind of leave it there in case anything flies in there, you don't want to be digging it out. So just keeping it like that. Kind of stuck here. The cops won't bother me.